Okay, why well, go through all the trouble to explain uh, bonding in terms of these potential wells between atoms, right? So what, we've got this picture, how does that help us? Well, these can actually explain quite a bit about materials around us. Let's start with something like the coefficient of thermal expansion. You've probably heard of that before, that things expand when you heat them up, right? This pen, it has some physical distance from end to end, but if I heat it up, it would most materials would get longer. A few would get a little bit shorter, actually. Those are very rare. Most materials get longer as you heat them up, and then when it cools down, it's going to shrink down again, okay? So how do we quantify that, and where's that coming from? Why should something get longer when you heat it up? Well, think about it. Not th These potential wells, I have intentionally not drawn them symmetric, right? This side is steeper, and then since this one goes towards zero, it's not as steep. So these aren't symmetrical. So what's going to happen as you heat something up? Let's think about it. So let's draw our potential well here. Okay. Again, this is energy on this axis. This is interatomic separation, so it's the distance between our two ions. So let's draw our material. It might look something like that. So if we take it all the way down to absolute zero, the coldest it can go, the coldest it can go, where is it going to go in terms of energy? When you take away all of its thermal energy, what's it going to do? It's not going to be vibrating anymore. It's just going to stop and it's going to stay put. And where will it be when it stays put? It's going to be right here. That's going to be where your, your atom lives at, your uh, compound lives at. The bond distance is going to be exactly R0. But now imagine with me, if you will, what happens when we heat this thing up a little bit? If we heat it up just a little bit, now we're giving it thermal energy. As we give it thermal energy, we're allowing it to slosh back and forth in this potential well. We're allowing it to not just stay in the lowest, it has a little bit of energy so it can move around a little bit. So what we're really doing is we're giving it energy up to certain levels as we heat it up. And as we keep on heating this thing up, look what's happening. Where is the average position at any given time? We know it's sloshing back and forth in this well, but where's the average position and what's it doing? Well, we can plot it. Let's draw the average position, the middle position. Check it out. What's happening to our average position as we heat it up? It's moving, right? It's actually moving with us, typically, outward. It's getting bigger. This, the, the molecule's expanding. At, at absolute zero, your negative and your positive have like some separation distance, R naught. But as you heat this thing up, they're literally getting more separate from one another. So this R at high temperatures, we'll call it R1, and that could be maybe right there, R1. Okay, they're getting more and more separate from one another. So these potential energy diagrams, if you had a way to plot them and you could look at the asymmetry, you could figure out uh, the coefficient of thermal expansion. Because in some cases, they might look like this, but in other cases, let's picture like a polymer or a metal, which doesn't go as deep, it might look like this. So let's draw this one over here. Um, the polymer, or the let's say it's a metal, it might do something like this. Well, now look what's happening. Here's its lowest point, and as you start to heat it up, its average position is increasing at a larger rate, right? This is less rapid onset, and this is more rapid. So polymers and metals are going to expand thermally more than ceramics. Ceramics are going to expand the least, typically. Metals expand a little bit more. Polymers expand a lot more because they're the most shallow potential energy well. So we can actually write these things down. We can say that um, ceramics are typically 1 to 10 parts per million per Kelvin. That's how much they expand. So what on earth is a parts per million? You know how we say percent? That's parts per 100. 1 divided by 100. So parts per million just means you take the number and you divide it by a million. That's all that means. And then per Kelvin. So for every 1 degree Kelvin that you heat it up, it, it increases by whatever this amount is. So those are your ceramics. A metal and a polymer are going to be greater than that. A metal is typically on the order of 10 to 100 parts per million per K, ppm per K, whereas a polymer very often are greater than 100 ppm per K. 
So this is a nice rule of thumb that holds. Uh, they're typically about this orders of magnitude, like a ceramic is about 10 times less than a metal. A metal is about 10 times less than a polymer. So let me ask you this, what's gonna happen when you make some sort of device, right? You make some handy dandy contraption for your next invention and it's made up of a polymer right here. Sweet, sweet polymer. And that is bonded with some sort of strong epoxy or something to a metal. What's gonna happen to that material as you heat it up and then cool it down and heat it up and cool it down? Are they expanding at the same rate? No way. The polymer is wanting to expand more, the metal is wanting to expand less. So if the polymer wants to expand more and it can't, it's in a state of compression. The polymer is being, the metal wants to expand less but it's being pulled a little bit so it's under tension. This will cause debonding and delamination in lots and lots of materials. Actually, thermal stresses are something we're going to cover in a, uh, later on this semester, but that's the origin of them, is that they don't all expand at different rates because they have different potential energy well curves.